Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Anna DiGilio who is in New York. How are you doing, Anna? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on today. Of course, of course. And Anna helps entrepreneurs, course creators, educator, creatives and service-based business owners turn their small business into profitable passion fueled powerhouses. I love that. Passion fueled powerhouses. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's start off, Anna. Tell us a little bit about your story because you were a you were a classroom teacher. Yes, that's true. I was a second grade teacher for 23 years, and I actually just left the classroom only three years ago. So I started to build my business while I was still teaching full time. And I started it just about eight years ago. And honestly, I wasn't planning on starting a business. It didn't happen that way. I started to sell my teaching lesson plans and activities online through a website. Uh, it's a teacher marketplace called Teachers Pay Teachers. And it was where teachers can sell their lesson plans and resources and activities to other teachers and I was like wow I could totally do this maybe I could you know pay the electric bill or you know buy my Starbucks without worrying every day you know that kind of thing and it quickly really turned into an extremely profitable business and at that point when I realized it I said I better learn how to run a business <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to school to be an educator and, uh, you know, never took a business class in my life. And that's kind of when my, my learning started. So I've read, gosh, two, 300 books easily on business, you know, online courses, podcasts, you name it. I just really dove in to learn everything I could about building and scaling a business. Yeah. You know, what's really interesting though, is that if we just go back to that for a moment about, you know, you were creating lesson plans and you're doing this and you, you, you were a, a classroom teacher and you realized that you had an expertise that was marketable that people would pay for. And I think that's, a, I think that's such a great lesson for people because I really do think a lot of people underestimate their own expertise and the experience that they have gathered over the years and they don't realize how marketable or how commercially viable that expertise can actually be. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And I truly believe that every single um, job or every single career that you have can be turned into your own business. You have a knowledge base and an expertise that other people will want, will want to learn from. They, they might have the same desires or, you know, career path in mind that everyone has it in them. You just have to think about how you can take that knowledge and that information and expertise that's in your head that you, that you can do in your sleep and be able to say, this is how you do it to other people. This is how you can make money doing this to other people. And, and sometimes people, you're right, they don't believe that it's possible, but it is. Yeah, and then obviously, uh, to what you said earlier, obviously then you went and learned about business, you educated yourself. So there's no excuse for people, like the resources are out there. Um, there's plenty of advice for doing it. So tell me about the the transition then into doing this full time when you made the decision, okay, I'm going to move out of the classroom and I'm going to focus 100% on, on my business. Absolutely. So basically what, when I started, uh, you know, I made my first sale three days later after I, per, I, I, I put up my first product. It was a digital PDF download that was teaching a math skill. And I put it up and three days later, someone purchased it. And I was like, oh my goodness. So from that moment on, when I realized, wow, people will actually pay money for my knowledge and my expertise as a classroom teacher, that's when I started going into it full force. Like I don't ever do anything halfway. I am mm -hmm. an all the way <laughs> kind of girl. I just go all in. So at that point, you know, I had two young, I have twin boys and they were young at that time. They were only about 10, 11 years old. So I was still teaching full time. I would come home, do dinner, homework, you know, the whole thing. And then I started to build my business at night. So I would get on the computer about 7.30 at night. I'd work till about 11 and I just created my resources every single day, every single day. And then when I realized it was a real business and I started learning about business, I learned about something called recurring revenue and how that really can help you scale a business. So then I jumped into the, under, the, uh, learning about membership sites and how to create a subscription based business. And that was when my sales really skyrocketed and I really started to scale at a level I never even thought possible. And when I, and when that started to happen, I was like, okay, so this was about, this is going back about 
four years ago now was when I started bringing recurring revenue into my business. And at that point, I said to my husband, you know, it doesn't make sense. You know, I'm making five times my teaching salary. It just right. doesn't make sense anymore for me to stay in the classroom making a teacher's salary when I could spend my entire day doing what I'm doing and make five, six, seven, eight times my teaching salary, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was the decision uh, that I made three years ago. And to be honest, I still ver very, very much miss the classroom. I miss the kids, I miss teaching. Sure. I mean, it was part of me, you know? But at that was the point I realized it was time. You know, I was, mm -hmm. I was more valuable to helping education at, you know, on a larger scale than just my little classroom, you know? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of the kids are missing the classroom too right now, which is uh, oh, an unfortunate so thing. So, okay, so explain to people then who are listening who may not understand. Okay, so they understand you were selling, um, you were selling lesson plans and all these other assets. The transition to a subscription-based business, as you say, that's where the recurring revenue comes in. That's where it's much more stable and more scalable type of business. So maybe explain to people what the difference is when you went from selling single items into subscription. Yeah, absolutely. You know, every day when you're selling one-off products, you know, you're hoping, oh, I hope I make this much this month, or mm -hmm. I hope I can get the same amount of month this month as I made last month. It's extremely unpredictable. Yes, I mean, if you're doing online advertising and things like that, then you can pretty much kind of gauge what your sales will be on a daily sure. basis. But I knew my goal was to scale this to a point where ultimately one day, maybe I would eventually sell my business or be acquired by, you know, a large education company you know so i knew in order to get there our revenues and our profit margins number one needed to be higher and number two needed to be consistent so that was when i just that's when i knew okay i need to know for sure okay i'm gonna bring in seventy thousand dollars every single month with this subscription site or i'm bringing in ten thousand dollars a month every month with this subscription site so that's important especially when you're thinking long term and i always really think long term i didn't at the beginning to be honest i mean the first couple of years i was like well this is great you know i'm making a little bit you know a little bit extra money you know on the side and we live in new york so the cost of living is extremely high here um but i was still making by the second year i was already making my teaching salary by my second year of business so um so that was what I think what's most important is with recurring revenue is that you absolutely know what you're going to be bringing in every month. Yes, you have attrition and you have churn rate. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about sure. that. Um, but it's much more re a reliable source of income and revenue that you don't have to worry about, well, what's coming in next month. Yeah. So how do you have to structure um, your business in order to turn it into a subscription business? Like, what is it? How differently do you need to package and and uh, your your services and your and your um, assets? How differently do you need to package them and make them available? And how differently do you need to sell the value of a subscription? Yeah, well, first, there are some differences. You know, if you're running just an e-commerce site like I have been doing, and mm -hmm. it's just one-off products, a membership site has to be set up differently. So there are tons of different um, online um, sites and programs and things like that that you can use to sell a recurring membership subscription site. Um, we started our first membership site on a WordPress site. So it's just a basic WordPress uh, website that we built and we used um, we use Wishlist Member, which allowed us to uh, drip out content every month to our members and that they would be charged on a recurring basis every single month. We also had annual and pay in fulls. We also offered that as well. Um, but we did have, that's how we set it up. So they could either pay monthly or yearly. And we used a WordPress press site plus a wishlist member. And then as we grew and scaled to thousands and thousands of members, we still worked on WordPress. And then we moved over to a new uh, membership um, format called Memberium. It was just a little bit, uh, gave us a little bit more control over how our resources were delivered each and every month. Um, now, um, when we when we got to the point where I knew that recurring revenue was very important, now we I launched a brand new membership site just back last August called Guided Readers, which is a reading program for parents and school districts and teachers, and that is a fully uh, fully customized built website uh, from the ground up. Yeah, wow. So, um, so again, there it's. Uh... 
it's a great lesson for people in the fact that, you know, sometimes they think, okay, I have a few things that maybe are valuable. You put them up and try to sell them single. But they, the fact is as consumers, we actually like the subscription. We like the ongoing support. We like the ongoing help. That's why we tend to uh, tend to sign up for these. And, and I bet you've, um, you've seen, I mean, you've obviously seen that yourself, how, how, and, and your type of customer probably changed a little bit as you moved into subscription, right? Yes, yes, they did. And, and I think what you were saying is exactly right. You know, they like that we like people, humans like consistency. Mm -hmm. Humans, I think, typically don't like change. So I really feel that that, that subscription really makes them feel that that continuity and that makes them feel like okay it's the same every month i know what i'm getting i know what it's expected there's no surprises and we're also i'm also there to support my members we're in a private facebook group they have access to me they can ask me questions so there's a lot more a creation of a community around a subscription site as well that you can add in a facebook group or you know a private you know chat room and things like that where all of your members can talk so it really creates a community of really raving fans when mm -hmm. you create a subscription site because you're there to support them. Yeah, and I think that's a fantastic point about raving fans because obviously that's the, the holy grail of where you want to get to is you don't want customers, you want fans. Yes. Uh, because fans um, obviously not just support you financially, but they also, they talk to other people, they promote you. I mean, the stuff that uh, you, you almost can't put a, can't put a price on. Yes. Uh, so then... So how important was the service element or is the service element on your, on your subscription to make sure that you maintain these people and that they become fans? You know, again, I think that it was easy for me to do it just because as teachers, we crave connections as mm -hmm. teachers, just because we need to support each other in what we do. You know, being a teacher and dealing with children all day long is, is a very, very difficult job and it's very trying. And you're not only their teacher, you're their mom, the dad, the dentist, the doctor, the nurse, the psychologist. I mean, you're so many things to those children for six and a half hours a day. So our jobs are trying. So I feel like creating the community was a very important part to support each other, to support teachers uh, in their journey and, and in improving their craft and just having other people saying, oh yes, the same thing's happening to me or, you know, just offering each other advice. This is how I dealt with this kind of situation. I think that's important, but I also believe it's important for any other um, niche that you're in, you know, like having the support of others that are doing the same thing as you, that have the same problems, the same issues, or even the same successes, it really creates this camaraderie for your audience that creates those raving fans, you know? So it's, it's kind of like this perfect storm that happens when you create a community. Yeah, and there's nothing that people, uh, that motivates people more is seeing other people successful because if they say, oh, wow, that's working for them, wow, then that could work for me. And it's a, uh, and, and that whole community then kind of, it kind of feeds on itself, which is, which is perfect, obviously, for you as, as you, um, as you are you know, as you provide more materials and, and services, et cetera, because the success of the individuals and the success of your brand become meshed together. Exactly. And that just creates more raving fans. And you're right, the word of mouth, there is just nothing that can beat that. And that's really what I've created probably over the last four or five years. It's just that constant uh, you know, referrals and word of mouth. Oh, you have to check her out. You've got to check out, you know, her membership site. It's unbelievable, that kind of thing. So that really has helped me build the brand and build the company. So what would you say to somebody who's listening or watching this and uh, they're thinking, well, I wonder if I could do that, but they're reluctant to, to, to try. What would you say to them? Oh gosh, I love this question because fear is debilitating. And when someone says, maybe I can do this, the moment that thought comes into your head, the next thought that comes into your head is fear. It is mm -hmm. fear, 100%. And it's debilitating. And people think, well, she can do it, but I can't. I mean, I want people to understand that I was teaching seven-year-olds all day long for 23 years. And now I have a multi-million dollar business that I created and built completely on my own without a business degree and without knowing one thing about business. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's really something that you mm -hmm. need to think in and think, 
my gosh, if she was with seven year olds all day and created a multi-million dollar business, I could do it too. And I am a firm believer that the moment you step into fear and the moment you allow yourself to feel the fear is where great things happen. Because every time I stepped into a bigger fear and I stepped into a bigger fear, huge things happened, huge things. And, you know, and that's I, I, what happened just now with this new site that I launched called Guided Readers. It was a fully custom built site, right? That was, you know, well, well over a hundred thousand dollars investment, right? You know, right mm -hmm. from the get go. But the moment I stepped into it, we're scaling to a level now I ever, I never even knew was a possibility. And again, so as soon as you step into that fear and you just, you know, you, you just embrace it, amazing things are on the other side. Yeah, listen, I just wrote that down because I just wanted to underline it for people about stepping into fear because often, you know, people you know, want to, obviously, they want to avoid it or if you, they dip their toe in it and, it, it, the, you know, the fear comes, they immediately retreat or whatever. I love what you're saying here about stepping into the fear because that's where things happen. So if there's one thing I'd like people to take away from today is that if you're thinking about doing something, you dip your toe into it, you see all the, the, the fear comes flooding in, just stick with it for a moment, as, and, and, and as Anna says, just step into it and, and embrace it. Embrace it and see what comes out of that instead of running away from it. Absolutely, 100%. You have to just step into it and uh, allow you to feel it. Feel the fear. It's okay. But if you keep going, incredible things will happen from that. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. It's a great way to end today, Anna. This has been fantastic. Uh, before you. we go, all of uh, Anna's information will be below the video here, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure, absolutely. So our main site is called Guided Readers. It's a reading program for teachers and also parents that are dealing with their own children at home and they want to make mm -hmm. sure that they're reading and they're developing in their reading. So that's Guided Readers and that's our educational site that we are uh, currently working with. And if there are people that are interested in learning about really building their own business and scaling their own business, I also do business coaching as well. And they can find that at graspyourgoals.com. And that's where I do my business coaching. Yeah, well, listen, thank you so much, Anna, today. An inspiring story. And remember the takeaway, step into your fear and embrace it and, and wonderful things will happen. Congratulations, Anna, on, on your success story, which is fantastic. Thank um, you so much. It was a pleasure being here. Yeah, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.